What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I'm asked all the time about loop order and loop preparation and all that stuff, because I tell you guys a lot about radiators and pumps and this and that, but I don't think I've actually done any sort of video where I specifically talk about loop preparation and where to put your parts and how to kind of plan for it. I've showed you build logs where it's kind of buried in there, but today we're gonna use my new build here. This is my personal rig um, that's gonna be bringing to the house. So I figured it's a perfect opportunity to show you how I kind of prepare for things. That way I try and limit the amount of surprises I get along the way. But inevitably a surprise will appear, guaranteed. Do you want to be cooler? Do you want to be more desirable? Well, you're in luck because right now you can own your very own Jay's Two Cent swag and immediately be the cool kid on the block. Max out your sex appeal by following the link down below. So when I'm preparing for my loop, it's important to make sure that I have kind of the main components in there so I sort of know where things are going to line up. Because you can't trust your eyeballs. You can't just look at it, eyeball it, and be like, oh yeah, that's where it's gonna line up. So at the very least, we have to get GPU, GPUs in there and motherboards. Now for this build, I'm gonna be using my uh, X299 Rampage 6 Extreme. Extremely overkill, honestly, for what we're doing but you know, that's okay. Now I made the decision to actually go with X299 on this and not Z370 like I originally planned because I'm probably gonna have two NVMe SSDs in here and just the PCIe limitation with two graphics cards wanting 16X in both of those for Gen 3 PCIe. I don't want to go through PCH. I, I want all of my stuff to be communicating directly with the CPU. I, I'm sure the difference is negligible when you're dealing with PCA, PCH lanes, but I just figured, why not? So we're gonna go ahead and put our Rampage in here. Now this is a, this is not an inverted case like you see, usually you see either like this or like this, but in this case, it's actually sideways like that. But because we are gonna have a radiator on both the bottom and the front, we need to get our components in here so we can at least start to measure distances. Cause I'm gonna be running the PE series radiators from the EK water blocks, and these are 40 mil rads. So they're a little bit thinner than the standard 45, which is nice as a standard. It's usually 30, 45, 60, kind of 15 millimeter increments. But this is a 40 mil, which is gonna give us a little bit more clearance. But once you put that on there, once you get fans front and rear, you can see it starts to fill up really quickly. Now I'm not gonna be using a 240, I'm gonna do two 360s, but let's go ahead and get things prepped and then we'll start kind of planning where things are gonna go. So here's the motherboard and the graphics cards in place, and actually they go a lot farther down than I was expecting. So I am gonna be running two Titan XPs in this system right here. Not Titan Voltas, if you guys wanna know why, check out my last video. And like I said, I'm not waiting for any new graphics cards. If new ones come, great, otherwise, here it is. But as you can see, it goes down much lower than I had initially anticipated that it was going to do, uh, which meant that with the 40 mil rad right here, Initially, what I wanted to do was I was going to have one horizontal, and it's going to be a 360 going the length, right? And I thought that maybe I could then use the bracket here and do a horizontal pump, which I hadn't done in a while. But as you can see, there is just not enough clearance for that. The sad part is if I was using a slim rat, like a 30 mil, there probably would have been enough, but I'm not going to sacrifice cooling capacity for the sake of mounting this horizontal. So that's a little bit disappointing. I could probably come up with a custom bracket. Nope, that won't clear the glass. So that's a perfect example of why we do this. Now there's something else I'm gonna do here in terms of prepping this. And also too, I don't have all my parts for this. I don't have the monoblock yet for this uh, board. I'm doing a monoblock, so we'll be replacing this heat sink with a single block that does both CPU and the VRM delivery. Obviously we're gonna be water cooling the graphics cards. But I'm doing two 360s. And the problem with the front right here, you can see it's split. And my first complaint about this case is although it has all of these different adjustable points, look at all these screw holes. So you can move them in, you can move them out. Same thing with this, we can slide it forward and backwards because there's several different mounting points. They should have just given you two 360 brackets like this because this split right here means that I can't actually mount fans on this side of the bracket. 
and then the radiator on this side, giving me more clearance this way. You can with this one. Fortunately though, is you can swap them. The other thing that kind of stinks though is working with this anodized surface, you can see it like grabs your skin and little micro scratches. They always buff out, but because this is a sandblasted, dusted, anodized finish, it's easy to scratch and stuff, so you want to be careful. So these two come out. Same with this one here, although this is a single piece. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move this one up front. Because it's a single bracket, I can mount the fans on one side of this and the radiator on the other and sandwich them together through the screws and uh, we can actually mount it. We're gonna do it this way because I want the fans on this side. And because you've got these different holes, like I said, we can move it in and out. So if you wanted to move this bracket in and go with a fat rat on the front and then have less you know, space right here, you can do that. That's what I love about this case is everything is just so well thought out in terms of adjustability. I just wish they had given us two of these because the way now that you have to make it mount is I'll, I'll show you how you have to do it on the bottom, you have to space it. And because of what I have to do now is why I don't have enough clearance to actually make it work like I wanted. So that'll go right there. And what we can do now is we take these two brackets and we need to flip them over upside down because again, because we can't mount our fans on this side because you'll see, remember I had that space in the middle. We flip it over so it's flat like this one was and then we go ahead and line it up with where we need it. So this one, I think right here was where it was. Even the hardware in this case is premium. You got these spring-loaded thumb screws which are retention, have a retention system so they don't fall out or anything like that. There we go, I think that's how it needs to go. So if we take our 360 right here, you can see now the holes will line up. So we can get four holes per bracket, but we can't slide it any farther forward even though we have a screw right there because then we'll interfere over here. So that's exactly why we are doing this test run now so I know exactly what I can fit in here. Now obviously the 40 mil will fit with these fans, but there was no chance whatsoever of getting the horizontal mounting there. Now if we take my, two, my uh, 240 here, which represents my 360 because of the thickness, we can actually mount this here like this because we know the fans are going to go on this side, but now we have to do a test fit of whether or not this is going to fit how I want with the height. And I don't think it's going to. I don't think that's going to work at all. I'll show you why. All right, so we take into account the height that we have to clear here. Remember, there's still another five millimeters on top of this that has to be cleared. I'm gonna put this little guy on here just for good measure so he can be like, that's the height we have to clear right there. And as you can see, because of this, this is kind of a terrible bracket in EK's, I don't like this bracket because look how much higher it mounts. It mounts almost in the middle of the 220 or 120 millimeter spot right there. So if it was mounted low like this, then I could, I could probably mount it on the second fan slot and have it fit. But as you can see, if we line this up right, so obviously it's not gonna clear down that way, like not even close. And I can't bring the bracket up any higher, we're already on the top slot. So if I line this up and say, let's pretend that was the middle slot, as you can see, it's just a little bit taller than it needs to be. And I don't want this to protrude out the top. I mean, maybe if we were going for that diesel car look, then it would look like a, a smokestack but that's not what we want. So I have two options here. Go with a shorter tube, which I think would look really dumb with how high this is raised up, right? Because you would have a real short reservoir tube right here, but then you have all this weird space and bracketry happening. So I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So what I think I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna test mount this radiator to this, and I'm gonna see if I have enough room to actually mount it on this wall right here, which I would, I think it would be neat mounted to the radiator, but they just have, it's such a terrible, this bracket is terrible. I mean, I, I get that it's universal and it's made to have a bunch of different things that can mount to it, DDCs and, and whatnot, but the fact that they force this to be mounted horizontally, I don't like it. I don't like it. And I haven't, but this is the first time it's actually become a problem. So it looks like we actually have just enough width right here to be able to actually mount this to the back wall and still have it be fairly even with the motherboard. Because what I like to do is I kind of like, well, it doesn't matter whether it's turn 90 or vertical the normal way, is I like to kind of center the reservoir and the pump on the motherboard. It's one of those asymmetrical things that just, it really bothers me if it's not. But then what I'm noticing is that puts this reservoir right in the path of this tube right here. So height-wise this, height this is gonna work. Width-wise this is gonna work. But I think now what I have to do is I'm gonna have to flip this rad over so the fittings are on the bottom, 
which is not ideal. In terms of bleeding air out of the system, it's better to have them on top, that way the air can actually travel out. It's not impossible, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip this over, because I think I could 90 degree fitting out and then have a bend going over the top of this rad running to over here. The idea too is I'm gonna have one of these tubes coming out and going right in to the block right here for the graphics card. So it's all gonna line up really well. But I think that's what I'm gonna end up having to do here. And that, that's ultimately what the layout is gonna end up looking like. And then for something like the radiator, is they're, all, they're not all the same sizes, right? Would you ever wanna have like a smaller radiator in there or? No. Okay. No, because I'm running two graphics cards. So you need to have a bigger radiator. I need to have as, mo as much as I can get, okay. which is why I'm running this thickness, right? So this one's, <laughs> this one's gonna actually. No, talk to me about the thickness. Now you guys know how I got this on my lip. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 tell me more. Tell, tell me more about what this looks like. <laughs> no, go ahead. Tell me about the thickness. If I flip this radiator over, and I do 90, de you know, 90 degree fittings coming out of it. Yeah. We'll have just enough height to come up and across this way, and one can go from the, from the pump, right? The out, actually it's in, so it'll probably reverse, it'll flow backwards. See, that's, that's the stuff you gotta think about. <clears throat> that makes this kind of tough. It's amazing how fast this case fills up yeah, with my stuff. God. People get mad they call it a case. It's a chassis, yes it's a chassis, it's not a case. It's fucking canvas, bro. It's fucking <laughs> canvas. I've been kind of experimenting for a little while here. First, I tried to flip the radiator over and put it on the bracket side to push it this way to get more room. The problem is it doesn't have enough overhang to where the fitting actually cleared the bracket. So the adapter that goes into the radiator right here actually impacted on this. Um, I actually thought about, because these are just bent over, I actually thought about putting this in a vise and bending that back to give me more clearance, but I can't because of the, the retention screws. And these are pressed into the metal. The, the sleeve for this is pressed into the metal. And trust me, on the Terry Crews uh, build, because we had the extra sleds, if you notice, I took the sleds out for the hard drives. NVMe SSDs only in this build, so I'm not gonna need any SATA power or SATA cables for any of that. I want it to be clean. They don't come out very easy. I, I tried with pliers and a vise and everything. I could not get it to come out because it's, uh, it's pressed in there good. So that wasn't, it wasn't an option. I also tried seeing if I maybe flip this bracket around this way and see if I could mount it on the bottom you know, fan right here. But as you can see, it still, it still impacts. And we're off by about a good four millimeters there. So that's not gonna work. I think mounting it on the back wall is definitely gonna be an option. One of the things that kind of sucks though about in a, in a build like this is there's only so many ways you can really make it work without doing custom fabrication of sorts. And so it starts to look like other builds that are out there. There's a really clean black and yellow build out there. Um, I'll put some links below to pictures of it that Although good for inspiration and a fantastic build, I'm trying to avoid it looking too much like that one. The problem is we're using almost identical parts in that build, and so I just don't want to, uh, I don't want to fall into that trap where it just looks like someone else's build. But that's the problem is, on something like this, you're forced into kind of a certain fit. Now he actually found a way to mount this lower, and I couldn't see in those pictures how he ended up doing it. I think he might have made a custom bracket, but I still think the back wall is the way that I'm gonna do it, which is how I did it with uh, Terry Cruz's build as well. I'm also toying around with some custom ideas here about disassembling this entirely, taking the back uh, motherboard tray off here and wrapping this in carbon fiber, uh, like the 3M die knock, like the matte carbon fiber. Because again, this is meant to be an automotive theme. I could do it with like this piece right here, just some accents and stuff because I feel like this has a very, I don't know, sort of a Koenigsegg feel although Koenigsegg isn't made out of steel. I'm also gonna probably do green fittings because uh, the green anodized fittings from Primo Chill, the compression fittings I like to use, match the, the hardware perfectly. So I think I wanna do that. Now I've seen some builds where people will actually put the reservoir on the front. The problem is going with a tall res like this again. Now I like the tall reservoirs. I really want the long one. Makes it, <laughs> yeah. And if I was to put this right here with this stupid bracket, as you can see, it just simply is not gonna clear. So I feel like we're exhausting our options here and it's still just looking an awful lot like mounting it to the back wall is going to be necessary. But that, that's where I'm gonna end it because I think that that's how I'm gonna have to do this here is I'm going to mount it like this. I'm gonna have the fittings on the bottom of this red and it's probably gonna come up and go over top because I want them to be visible. I could totally run it underneath, but I want the fittings and the tubing to be visible 
Haven't decided yet exactly which fluid I'm gonna run. I might do the View, I might do Mayhem's, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm gonna kinda decide that as I go, but I want a lot of this space to be filled with tubing and stuff. So I'm gonna go guys, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any suggestions for this because I want this done, I'd like it to be done in December. Don't see any reason why it can't be. Nothing incredibly custom on this, except for the cables. Damn, cables. Cables are gonna be hard. All right guys, we're gonna go. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.